welcome back to another segment of Community Lens. I am Erica Jones and I am the Director of Institutional Advancement here at Somerville Media Center. We welcome staff from the Tisch College of Civic Life at Tufts University onto the program today to discuss their mission, their programs, and their upcoming 2019 calendar of events. We are joined with Jessica Burns, a Special Projects Administrator, and Shirley Marth, the Director of Community Partnerships. Thank you both for coming down to the you know, Union Square studios here and uh, to discuss a little bit more about what you all do over at Tufts. Thanks Thank so much you. for having us. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I know a little bit of the background for the Tisch College, just having you know, um, done my own research in general, but just I think it's a fantastic um, mission and service for giving back to the Somerville community. And um, according to the website, it prepares young people for a lifetime of effective engagement in civic and democratic life and provides real experience around solving social issues and much, much more. <laughs> and the much, much more, um, I would love for you, Shirley, to, to just chat a little bit more about what you do and, and the Tisch College's mission, any signature programs that you, that you want to share. Sure, sure. So um, as you mentioned, Tisch College, we're really focused on educating the next generation of leaders, mm -hmm. you know, starting with them as college students. And um, our mission is really broad and robust. We are about advancing civic engagement both on campus as well as in the communities, in local communities, national communities, and globally. Um, some of our signature programs that are in Somerville we're really proud of. One is the Tisch Scholars Program. That's an academic year leadership program for Tufts undergrads to partner with an organization in the community and to work on a project for the entire academic year. And we've had Tisch Scholars in Somerville for as long as we've been around, which is almost 20 years. That's great. Yep. And then another program we have is the Tisch Summer Fellows. And that program's been going on for probably 10 years where we, Tisch College actually pays for tough students to work full time at community and public agencies in um, three different cities in Somerville, well, three different areas and Somerville is one of them. So we've partnered with um, many organizations in the community like Somerville Community Corporation, Community Action Agency of Somerville, Somerville Homeless Coalition, Groundwork Somerville, the Welcome Project, mm -hmm. and many others. And many of those organizations we are ongoing community partners with as well. So we get to That's interact great. with a lot of those. That's uh, great. And, and I guess the last program that I'll mention right now is the STEM Ambassadors Program. It's a great um, partnership between Tufts, the Center for STEM Diversity at Tufts, um, undergraduates who are STEM majors, mm -hmm who are really passionate about STEM, what they do is we provide them with a lot of leadership development as well, and they develop STEM presentations that they deliver to all the 10th graders in science classes at Somerville High. Wow, that's great. So that's an amazing program. So that's a nice engagement with, with the youth community here. Yes, Somerville. for sure. And has that been pretty um, positively like received and participated? With? Oh, definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah, so we're reaching hundreds of students, and it's been, I think this is our fourth year. That's fantastic. In Somerville. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, is this, are, are these um, different opportunities like a unique offering of, of a school or uh, like the Tisch Scholar program or um, is this like a model that has been replicated in other areas, do you know? There are other undergraduate leadership programs, like there are other schools that have them or um, there's a program called the Bonner Scholars, which mm -hmm. I'm not that familiar with, but it's at other schools. But I think the Tisch Scholars is pretty unique. It's it, well known. That's why I'm just curious. Like, it sounds very, um, it's very special. Yeah. And it's very impactful, clearly, that so many nonprofits continuously, like, apply yes. each year, right? Yes. And very um, rewarded by, by that work. Yeah, we're really focused on reciprocity. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have benefits for our partners who work with us. We have learning opportunities for partners because we know they play a really important role in educating our students. And so we're always trying to find ways to support our partners as well. That's great. And some are more recent as well. So we um, have a program called Jumbo Vote, which is yes. entirely student-led, um, and it's housed at Tisch College for administrative support. But um, it's really 
JumboVote is an initiative to boost civic and political learning and engagement on campus, not just during election years, but all the time. That's great. Um, so and like local elections as well as... Absolutely. Yes. Um, and they do amazing work. They've done great work registering um, students, faculty, and staff, and community partners to vote, um, getting folks to the polls on election days, reminding them um, where their location is. We also have several polling locations on campus. And one cool thing we've done around that is our Tisch Summer Fellows program. We actually had two Tisch Summer Fellows um, leading into the 2016 general election that we're working in the Somerville Elections Office. And oh, wow. mm. um, that was a really wonderful partnership. Mm -hmm. And, and um, the Somerville Elections Office just could not have been a more... Perfect site. Yeah, yeah, it was great. I know the students got so much out of it. And I hope that um, you know the Somerville Elections Department did as well. And um, it was just a great example of sort of a new way to create a collaboration. Yeah, civic leaders. Mm -hmm. which is wonderful. Obviously, 2016 had a lot of activity. Yes, so it did. It did. <laughs> I'm sure they had a lot out of that as well. Um, that's fantastic. Are there any other programs that you'd want to highlight in addition to all those great uh, community impactful work? That's going well, on? we also have programs on campus for the community. Mm -hmm. um, there is one, program, one event that we organize every year. It's called the Tufts Presidential Symposium mm -hmm. on Community Partnerships. And it's um, an opportunity for all our host community partners to meet with Tufts faculty, with President Monaco, mm -hmm. Tufts faculty, staff, and students, and to talk about how we're working together and how can we improve that. And so wow. that's an annual event that's always been pretty successful. That's great. Has, has anything come out of that that you've been like surprised by or that um, maybe was able to be like implemented and, and creating like a better partnership model or something? It is a great networking opportunity mm -hmm. and direct partnerships have come out of it. That's wonderful. Yeah. Great. <laughs> There's a Thanks. lot going on. There's a lot going on. There's a lot on. going on. Um, speaking of a lot going on, you just um, finished up the 2019 calendar for the spring. Yes. And there's a lot. There's a lot going on there as well, and many opportunities for the public, um, the community here to attend some great um, programs. So, what 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 would you like to share with us? On yeah, um, thank you so much for asking. So I, in my role at Tisch College, I manage um, our events and we have several different event series and our um, most well known is probably our Distinguished Speaker Series. Mm -hmm. Um, so we actually just released our full lineup for the spring semester um, yesterday, so hot off the presses. Um, <laughs> we are so excited to welcome um, Donna Brazil. She mm -hmm. will be speaking in February. She's the former chair of the Democratic um, National Committee. Mm -hmm. um, and she's also, I think, worked on every presidential campaign from 1976 to 2000. What a resume. I know. I bet the she has stories. Funny stories. Yeah, to the share. stories she would have. Yeah. Um, and most, well, one amazing thing about her, she's the first female African American um, campaign manager for a presidential campaign, which was Al Gore's 2000 um, mm. bid for the presidency. Um, so she just has such great stories to tell, great insider knowledge of, I think, you know, the political party system in the United Absolutely. States. and. Um, uh, I think we'll have a really engaging conversation. So she's coming in February. We're also really excited to have uh, former Senator Jeff Flake from the other side of the aisle. He's a re former Republican senator from Arizona. He stepped down in January. Um, and folks may be familiar with his name, but he um, has been a senator since, or was a senator since 2012. He was a member of Congress before that, is a representative before that. Right. Um, and he has sort of, become a, a staunch critic of the current administration, um, but he's sort of a libertarian um, thinker as well. He's a very interesting individual, so we're excited to have him. He will be speaking in March. Um, all of these events are in the evening as well because it's really important to us to have members of the community um, and, and alumni and working folks be able to make it to the Tufts campus to come see these folks. All these events are free. And this is part of the Distinguished Speakers series. Yes, correct. And then our last um, Distinguished Speaker Series event is in April, and that is Ibu Patel. He's a faith leader, educator, and activist, and author as well. And um, he is the president and founder of the Interfaith Youth Council, which does really great work empowering young people um, across religious faiths to come together and, and um, you know, sort of develop relationships. So. Um, yeah, I think really 
interesting, diverse folks that we're excited to have. Those are all in the evening. They're all free. Um, we love members of the community to come and, and to be part of a conversation that we hope is ongoing. That's great. And how, how do you get to that point of choosing those people? Like just for like the behind, because yeah. as also an event organizer, <laughs> my role here, it's, there's a lot of legwork that goes into the process of just starting off with like the concept for the series and then totally you choose. How do you get how do you get down to this point? How, yeah, how I mean, behind the scenes of all this? totally. It's messy. Um, <laughs> so it's a long process. We always have asked out to a lot of folks because not all of them pan out for completely legitimate Schedule reasons them, and scheduling, sure. and they're all high profile mm -hmm. people who are doing a lot of important things. So, um, you know, really increasingly, it was particularly because the speaker series was launched in 2014, but I'd say in the past couple of years, particularly, we take very seriously the recommendations that we get from the Tufts and Boston community. So, you know, we've had speakers that were suggestions from students, um, alumni, faculty, staff, you know, community members. We take those suggestions very seriously. Um, and we've had some really great conversations as a result of that. So that's one. Um, another is just serendipity. I think mm -hmm. if, if we know that an elected official or someone else that we're really excited about is traveling to the Boston area, we'll you know ping them Jump and see if we that. can get them yeah. to come to talk to some right. students and community members. So um, it's a long process, but um, we're trying to be as intentional as possible to bring different voices to campus and, and create a really robust conversation that talks about different pathways to civic engagement. That's awesome. And I just, I, I always just think about when I was in college, how much I wish I took more advantage of mm -hmm. some of those, like, wonderful, robust programming opportunities yeah. of, like, speakers mm -hmm. or just performances or arts sort of related um, events. But this is great, and now I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm reclaiming that experience and putting yeah, it into well, the Well, please come. Areas. We'd love I to will. have you. I will. These, these sound great. Um, and I appreciate just all the legwork like, that you both put into it, especially just nailing it down to those to the selections. It's, it's a fun a job. Conversation. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, there's obviously more um, events on the calendar. What are some other ones you might want to um, ping out there? Yeah, so not part of our Distinguished Speaker Series, but I'm just really excited about them. There's two that I want to mention. The first is um, sort of a, a mini documentary screening called, the documentary is called Goodbye Congress, Don't Get Rolled. Mm -hmm. And it's filmed by renowned documentarian um, Alexandra Pelosi, who you've probably guessed it is the daughter of um, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. So she's done a lot of amazing work over the years, and this is her most recent project. And basically, um, you know, there's been so much press recently about the new Congress, which mm -hmm. is very exciting. Mm -hmm. But in early January and I think December, she interviewed. Um, you know, over 15 exiting yeah. members of Congress on both sides of the aisle to have really frank and pretty funny conversations about. They're pretty you know, raw and insightful. They're raw. <laughs> and, um, you know, what did you expect when you started at Congress? You know, how did that change? What advice do you have for the newcomers? You know, and, and it's just really interesting conversations. It's nice juxtaposition to a lot yeah. of the the media attention, which there should be a lot of media attention there should. On, on the new um, energy that has come kind of sweeping through yes. the House, but it's also a nice reflection on also humanizing just the elected leaders and Absolutely. You know, hearing their stories. And what can we learn from right. that what and, and use or not use? So I think that'll be really interesting. That's in February. It's during the day, during the school day. So. Um, you know, we'll do sort of a mini film screening of that documentary, and then Alexandra Pelosi herself will be here to answer questions for folks. So it should be pretty cool. And then the second event I wanted to plug is um, we have a new professorship at Tufts called the Newhouse Professorship of Civic Studies that we're very excited about, and it's sort of housed within the political science department and also Tisch College's Civic Studies mm. major, which is a new academic major at Tufts. Um, and when we create a new professorship like this, there's an inaugural lecture given by the professor who holds that title, who in this case is Professor Brian Schaffner. He's wonderful. Um, and his inaugural lecture will be in April, and it's called Trump's Rhetoric and Expressions of Prejudice Among the Public. And um, it's sure to be a very interesting conversation. Resonating. Yes. There's a theme often, and this is nice to, yeah. this is nice to have these very raw and meaningful dialogues as we get yes. more. And it's definitely a dialogue. We hope that, you know, it's really important to us that there's Q&A with the audience. Um, 
after each mm -hmm. event and during. So we encourage folks to follow us on social media and often we have a, a hashtag associated with each event that That's we right. hope people will chat online um, as well as coming to the event and asking a question themselves. Um, so again, all of them are free. You can read more about them on our website. Um, and you can also register for them as well, just so we, um, that helps us plan for space Absolutely. as well. Yeah. 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 And I'm sure that there's goals of just, I mean, a lot of these, um, I'm sure will be inspiring and resonating for people who attend and, and hopefully there's like actionable solutions mm -hmm. or, um, we hope so. That's, that's always the goal. Yes. That's always the goal. But first dialogue. And then hopefully after that, there's the motivation Action. to continue on. Sure. Um, this is wonderful. Is there anything else that either of you would like to like put out there in the in the in, this, in the community sphere here about sure. other other upcoming activities or opportunities for volunteerism or just how to get more information on the programs? Well, we have Tufts University has many um, opportunities. Well, Tufts students are very interested in getting engaged with the community, mm -hmm. and so there are several times during the year where we'll be looking for partners to host students for service days. That's great. And so one is called Focus, mm -hmm. and it happens before the freshmen matriculate in the fall. It's usually for a week in August, and so we'll be looking for partners to host students, and many Somerville groups have hosted students in the past. Great. Um, I guess the other thing I want to mention is that Tisch College is really um, committed to community-engaged research, mm -hmm. and there's several different there's several different research opportunities. So if people in the community have research questions, mm -hmm. they should approach us, and we can help identify whether there is an appropriate vehicle for them to work mm -hmm. with or places to get their research questions Could answered. You just elaborate more on like an example, just for people who might be interested but not sure how to navigate that. Yeah, one of the programs that we're very proud of was initiated by a Somerville resident, um, Ellen Reisner. Mm. She was interested in the impact of highway pollution on human health and on wow. the community. And so she had approached one of our faculty more than 10 years ago. And it took them a few years to get that project going, but it's resulted, it's called CAFE for short, and it stands for Community Assessment of freeway exposure to health, wow. and it's um, yeah, it's called Cafe, and they've studied they've been studying the impact of having 93, the 93 expressway, on the summer on the East Somerville community, as well as Chinatown and Dorchester. Um, so that's a great example of how a single person really asked a very simple question, and that has resulted in a huge multi-year research project. I guess the last thing I want to plug, because I can't resist myself, is that <laughs> this is we, why you're here. Plug away. we do have amazing research about civic engagement. Mm -hmm. um, one of our research institutes, it's called CIRCLE, Center for Information and Research on Civic Learning and engagement. And engagement. Nice. It's a long I, acronym. That, it's a long, a long acronym, long. yeah. But CIRCLE <laughs> studies a lot of different things. The one that most people will be familiar with is the youth vote. Mm -hmm. So after every um, national election, when you read about the youth vote, that usually comes through CIRCLE, our research colleagues who work in CIRCLE. We also have another research entity that's called the Institute for Democracy and Higher Ed, mm -hmm. and that group studies college student voting okay. and college student engagement. So That's those great. are, they're, they're amazing resources that I think, you know, some people in the community will be interested I, in. I did not know about that at all. Um, what happens with that data? Like what is the goal behind collecting that information? Well, the CIRCLE research, we hope that practitioners will benefit from it. Mm -hmm. We have lots of fact sheets, mm -hmm. um, you know, on the website. Um, I don't know, can you speak to that? Yeah, we have a lot of amazing like resources and tools on our website that um, it's, it sort of depends what you're looking for, but can break down districts across the United States of how you know young people have voted in the past, what districts might be particularly competitive in an election. And um, you know we use that information to give to 
practitioners on both sides of the aisle in the hopes that it will help boost, um, you know, attention. Yeah, and, you know, millennials are the largest voting bloc in the country, and it's really important that the millennial vote is taken seriously, and it's our job to tell that to people and right. show them how and, and how young people need to be contacted. And um, and for IDHE, the, the program that studies young people's voting on college campuses, those all, so there's over a thousand universities and colleges across the country that participate in the voting study that IDAG conducts. Um, and it's really amazing. So after every election, they give a report to each institution that wow. sort of breaks down to pretty crazy detail of mm -hmm. here's how students voted, obviously with no personal information, right. but you know, we can tell like which major programs tend to vote more, which, you know, gender, ethnicity, and um, and how, what are some tools that you might boost vo voter turnout on your campuses? And that's actually how I spoke about Jumbo Vote earlier. Right. Mm -hmm. Jumbo Vote was launched because um, Tufts received our own campus report and, you know, our voting rates for, I think, the 2014 midterms were, you know, about national average, but were lower than we would have liked. Right. So we launched Jumbo Vote and, you know, we boosted our voter turnout in the next, actually, in 2018, um, astronomically. So. That's wonderful. Yeah, I think giving informed research with the hope that it leads to action is absolutely what is important yeah. to us. Yeah. And you took the information, the response, and mm -hmm. created an action. Yeah. And you saw results. That's yeah, and that's happening that's across the great. country, and it's it's exciting to see. Yeah. 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 That's wonderful. Great. Thank, thank you for adding those, sure. those important um, aspects to the to the school. Um, this was great. I is there anything else that we want to share? I would just say that um, we are doing a lot in some of what you've heard about and, and more as yeah, well. More. So, um, and we always have great opportunities that um, go beyond what we just talked about. Sure. So, and that come up with little notice. So I would encourage you to, to join our newsletter, which you can do on our website at tishcollege.tufts.edu. Mm -hmm. If you want to sign up for any of the events I talked about, that's tishcollege.tufts.edu slash events. Um, and I would encourage you to follow us on social media, particularly Facebook and Twitter. Just, you know, you'll hear about what's going on and, and what um, great opportunities exist for folks in Somerville. That's amazing. And thank you both. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you, Jess, for, for coming down here and yeah. for sharing more. And we look forward to having you back soon. Yeah, thank you for Thanks having, so for having, having us. us. Yeah, yeah, no thank worries. you. And thank you all for tuning in to this uh, segment of Community Lens. And all the information that Justice shared is on the screen. And we hope to see you soon and at these many events and participating. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.